Hey everybody, it's Randy Colby. It is July the 11th, and I'm going to try to uh, get this done before I go to bed. It's late Sunday night, Monday morning. Um, if there's something I've been wanting to share, um, and that someone has encouraged me to share, uh, that I think may be of a lot of benefit to someone out there. Hopefully, I pray that this is the case. Otherwise, there's no point in sharing this story. I share this story to reach anyone that might be in need of hearing it, for one reason or another, to encourage, uh, to encourage them in their walk with Christ, or to discourage them from their the path that they're on. Whatever the case may be, I pray just, Lord God Almighty, that you just use this and anoint this video to reach whoever it needs to reach for your glory, God. I pray you do bring things to mind that I need to remember and give me the words to say, Lord. Amen. Okay, so this happened, uh, gosh, right out of high school. So it had to be like 89, 1989, 1990. 91, somewhere in there. I graduated in 1989, and it was shortly after high school that I had this experience where I believe that I did experience hell. And praise God, I lived and was brought back out of that and was not stuck there for eternity. Now, um, So one afternoon back in 89, 90, whenever it was, could have been the summer of 1989, I, um, and I hesitate. I've hesitated to share the story because of the, the part I'm about to share now. I took some LSD, and I don't want people to be, to discount my story and my account by just saying that oh, you just had a bad trip. Because what I experienced was much more than that, okay? It was much more than just a bad trip. Uh, I had done LSD before. I never had an experience like this. So what happened was I took two hits of white blotter, and I remember when I procured the acid, it was on blotter paper, two little squares, and um, I remember the paper was still wet. Uh, I had a friend get this for me. I don't know who made it. I don't know what it was cut with, but it was, it was pretty strong acid, and um, I took it by myself, and um, I remember it hitting me within like 45 minutes 30 to 45 minutes after I took it, I was starting to have pretty intense visuals already, which was kind of unusual for it to hit you that hard from the get-go. Um, I'm going to cut out a lot of parts that are just uh, unimportant here. Basically, uh, I was downtown when it started to hit me. I drove home. I called a friend up. He came and got me, smoked a joint with me. We went back downtown. He was driving. I had a lot of good times, but then I began to lose touch with reality a little bit. I began to have um, delusions of grandeur. Just really going off on tangents, just thinking that um, anything was possible. And my buddy at the time, Tom, who is in heaven now, um, took me back to his house to try to calm me down. And I became convinced that he was having a party inside and wouldn't let me inside, which the truth of the matter was he just didn't want me inside waking up his dad because I was loud and I was flashing through a lot of emotions um, but I remember seeing seeing people from my high school 
like spirits, sort of, around me. And they were having, laughing and having a good time. And they were inside the house, and I thought I could hear them having a party. And I thought my friend Tom just didn't want to let me in. Um, and I, was, yeah, I got very angry about this. And I got so angry that I got to the point where I smashed the glass on his front door, on the screen door, and it shattered into a million pieces. And at this point, this is the point, I just want to back up a little bit here. I remember on the way back to his house, I remember saying, you know, I don't think God really cares whether I do drugs or not. And I believe that is why God allowed me to experience what was about to happen to me at this point. Because I believe that we can, you know, Christ said that in the last day there will be many that would say, Lord, Lord, did we not do many works in your name? Did we not cast out demons? Did we not perform healings? And he will say, depart from me, I never knew you. I think it's possible to call yourself a Christian, to go through the motions, and yet not truly be saved. And I was not living a life of repentance. I was wallowing in my sins and glorifying them and saying it was okay with God. And I believe that's why he allowed me to have this experience, among many other reasons. But so I smashed this glass, and what I looked, what I saw when I looked down was blood pouring out of my body. Now, this was not actually happening in reality. But this was my reality at the time. I looked down, and I was covered in blood. This glass had penetrated me, and I was just covered in blood. And I remember falling down onto my knees onto his porch. And in my mind, I was dying. And I fell down onto the concrete. My head hit the, 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 the porch, the concrete on the porch. And um, I just lay there, and uh, in my mind, I was dying, and I was having a sensation. I remember chaos around me. I remember hearing screams around me. There were other people. I remember being enveloped in what, to me, was kind of like a soup of chaos is what it seemed like to me. Um, it was like matter and anything we call reality was just this soup of floating matter floating about. It was total chaos and there was no sanity to it. There was no cohesion. And I remember hearing the cries of other people screaming and crying and death surrounded me. And I had the sensation of other people being around me, but I could not communicate with them. It was a place of darkness and separation. And um, I had the sensation that I was traveling at the speed of light or faster than the speed of light in all directions at the same time. And I heard this loud noise in my head begin to, it was like a groaning. I mean, I can't even, I can't duplicate what it was. It was, but it overtook anything in reality that I could hear. It overtook that. So I could not hear anything. This was my reality, this place I was entering. And I remember having this sensation uh, of passing through and down into the center of the earth. And when I got there, it was the most horrific thing that I could never have imagined before. And during this time, uh, my friend had called the police, my friend Tom. He had called the EMA, he had called 911 because he didn't know what else to do for me at that point. And they had come 
and I remember them putting their knee in my back, and I remember them handcuffing me. But in my mind, it was the end of the world. It was the book of Revelation. I was being hauled off to have my head chopped off or whatever. And while all this was going on, I was being enveloped in the sea of chaos. And like I said, this, the experience of traveling in all directions at the same time, at the speed of light, and then passing down into the center of the earth, into hell. Because what happened at that point was complete and utter pain and endless torment. And I don't know how to describe it to you other than to say that it was forever, it was eternal, and it went on and on and on. Weeks, months, years, centuries, eons, eternity. And I knew, I, I remember having my life flash before my eyes, different images of different things. And I remember coming to the conclusion, oh my God, I've died and gone to hell. I'm in hell. And what I experienced in this place was eternal suffering. It was death reoccurring over and over again. I would be killed one way, and then I would come back to life and be killed again. And they just kept going on over and over. Any way you can imagine dying or ending of a life or being killed, I was shot, I was electrocuted, I was run over by a steamroller. I remember feeling the sensations of these things as they happened. Pain and agony. The steamroller rolling over my body and all my guts just in every direction. Being electric, being hit on the head with like an electric socket from a light bulb and just electricity shooting through my body. Being shot, being stabbed, just anything you can imagine. And that's as soon as that would happen, there, but there was no end to it. There was no silence when you die. It just, you would immediately come back and it would just continue on and on, over and over and over. And this literally, it was a timeless place. It was eternity. This stretched on for an unfathomable amount of time because there was no time in this place. It was eternity. And I knew that I had died and gone to hell. And I wish I could have been able to share this back then, but there was no internet back then. Because I know I've lost a lot of the emotion, a lot of the fresh memory of that experience. But all I can say is that hell is a very, very real place. And you do not want to go there. It's forever, and you make your choice now whom you will serve. Are you going to serve yourself? Or will you serve Christ? Because only through repentance and picking up your cross and following Jesus will you be saved. Any other way is damnation. And that's not that God doesn't love you, that he doesn't want you to be saved. It's that we send ourselves to hell because we want our own way. We want our way. We want to excuse our sin. We want to say, it's okay. But God has said something else. And God has better for you in mind. God wants you to be with him. That's why he came and died on the cross, was for your sin, a final sacrifice, so that all who call on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ shall be saved. Repent, be baptized. And I'm not saying you have to be baptized to go to heaven. But it is something the Lord asked us to do, to follow him in obedience. Be obedient to Christ. And I, there was something about 15-minute videos, and it's about to go over that. So I hope this doesn't, I hope this uploads to YouTube, because it's at 14 minutes and 50 seconds now. But I'm just going to... Um,
Well, I'll just end it now. We'll let it roll and see what happens. I can always do this again. Basically, um, they had hauled me off. They took me to a hospital and um, called my parents. They figured out who it was, called my parents. And um, they basically were telling them to be prepared to um, have me locked away in a rubber room for the rest of my life that I would more than likely not come back because they had given me uh, two shots of Thorazine. Normally they would give a person one and it would bring them down instantly. Well, they gave me one and it didn't do anything. They had me strapped down to this this table. And uh, apparently, I don't even remember shots. I don't know. They gave me a shot of Thorazine and I was still just as wild and crazy. And I do remember having vague memories of my parents being there. I remember spitting in my dad's face. I was possessed or oppressed to some degree. I remember spirits being around me, surrounding me. I remember hearing spirits talk around the room. I remember when I would speak, I would hear spirits in the room that were saying the same things that I was saying, external to me. And they had this, yeah, it was not my voice. It was definitely demonic. I was under the control of these people, but it was a God. It was an experience that God allowed me to experience, perhaps just for this purpose now, to share this with you. And I just realized I'm wearing the shirt now that a friend of mine made. If you can see that, it's, just, it's a little hourglass. That's our lives. Our days are numbered. This is death coming upon the earth here. Our days are numbered until that day. Choose this day whom you will serve. Because it's only on this side of eternity that we have the ability to choose. After we're dead, we're done. That's it. We've made our choice. Will we spend it in heaven? Or will we spend it in hell? Choose Christ. He's the only answer. And he is available to anyone who would call out to him. He is no respecter of persons, is what the Bible tells us. Meaning, he doesn't care who you are, what you've done, where you're at. If you call on his name, he will hear you and answer. And you will be saved. Now, I was strapped down to this table, and they gave me two shots of Thorazine, apparently, and I was still just gone. Um, in hell was where I was. Um, I was not with it. This reality here was not was gone for the longest time, and the place I was in was much more real than the reality that we all live in day to day. It's more real than this reality. If that, I don't even know how to explain that. It was more real than real. It was a much deeper and horrible experience. I can only imagine what heaven's like, how much more real that is on the opposite end of the spectrum. Because life with Christ and glory will be joy and peace forever in his presence. And all these things we do to try and fill the void that we have inside are just counterfeits that the devil offers us to what God has planned for us. Jesus said, in my Father's house are many mansions, or many rooms, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back for you and take you to be with me forever. I was strapped down on this table, and um, I remember I just wanted it to end. It was agony. I was coming kind of, I was kind of in and out of this world, and the eternal afterlife. 
I was coming in, but there was just so much torment and demonic spiritual oppression within me and around me that I didn't want to live anymore. I just wanted, to, I just wanted it to stop. And I remember like trying to pull myself out, and I remember my wrist, my hands, my fingers were tingly and numb for weeks and probably a couple of months afterwards because I was in these straps and just pulling to get out with superhuman strength and just damaging nerves in my hand. But I remember like just trying to struggle around and move and I remember the top of this, whatever I was on, um, this metal table, the top, it sort of um, moved. And I'm like, oh, I can shake this thing down. And I started rocking and pulling. And the table that I was laying on fell and slid back. And I hit my head. And everything went black. And that's the last thing I remember. Before they came in and said, okay. Randy, we think you've calmed down enough now. And I kind of woke up. And they said that we and they said, you've calmed down enough now, we're gonna undo a couple of these strengths, but if you do anything crazy, we're gonna have to restrain you again, okay? And I was just like, okay. And they undid some of my restraints and I, I was back in reality again. I don't know what happened when I shook myself off that table, that gurney, whatever I was on. But that was there was no illusion there. I don't know what happened. I fell off the top, strapped to this table, and I just slid down, hit my head, everything went black. But when they came back and untied my restraints, there was no pain, there was no bump on my head. I was back up on the table. I don't know what happened. They were trying to hide something, try and not get a lawsuit because they found me, but none of that what they did woke me up, brought me out of this that I was in. I was just right back where I started again. They said that, of course, they didn't, didn't know what I was talking about. I don't know. I don't know what happened. That part is still a mystery to me. But I remember there was nothing... I know it, it was hard enough to knock me out, at least. But there was no pain. There was no bump on my head. There was nothing. I remember like just looking for some sort of bruise and feeling it, and there was nothing that was tender or anything. And thank God. I was just so grateful, although very depressed, and had much, a lot of post-traumatic stress disorder, long after this event because of how real and how awful this was. I'm telling you, hell is real and it's forever. Make your choice now whom you will serve because you do not want to go there. I would not wish this upon my worst enemy because hell is forever. It's forever. Thank God I was given another chance. He just allowed me to taste hell to experience it for a season and brought me out so I can share it with you. I don't know. But that's it for this video. I don't know where else to go from here other than to say God bless you. If you have any questions, feel free to contact me. Uh, you can always contact me at randycolby.com. You can find me there or here on YouTube where I'm going to post this. And that's all it for now. God bless. Take care.